Today, we're venturing into the captivating world of numismatics, focusing on eight rare and valuable coins that emerged from the vibrant era of the 1960s. These coins aren't just pieces of currency, they're captivating stories etched in metal, sought after by collectors for their historical allure and distinctive designs. If you're ready to uncover the secrets behind these numismatic treasures, hit that subscribe button and let's embark on this exciting journey together. Number 81962, Lincoln Cent graded in Mint State 67 plus read by PCGs. It is sometimes difficult to remember that the Lincoln Memorial Cent design is now more than half a century old. Despite massive mintages, these coins were not saved and are now conditioned rarities with the plus designation. This example is one of December 19th, 62 Lincoln cents that PCGs has certified with just single finer. The surfaces are brilliant and frosty with rich orange mint color. Marks and spots are absent on this superb gem. It was sold for $8,812.50, number 71961 Franklin half dollar with double die reverse graded as PR66 cameo by PCGS E Pluribus, Unum and United exhibit remarkably strong die doubling. Other reverse legends also show doubling brilliant and prominently mirrored with outstanding preservation and noticeable cameo contrast. It was sold for $8,812.50, number six, wonderfully toned, 1960 d Washington quarter dollar, graded in mint state 67 by PCGs. Both sides of this superb gem display intense toning over frosty silver luster with bold design motifs. The obverse is mostly deep gold with burnt orange and sea green near the border. The reverse shows intermingled russet, lilac green, and blue toning. It fetched a sum of dollar nine thousand. Number five one nine six five Roosevelt dime struck on a ninety percent silver planche. Rare transitional alloy error in mint state sixty two. The U.S. mint transitioned to clad dimes during nineteen sixty five. Silver dimes continued to be struck to use up the remaining stock, but those coins were intended to be produced on nineteen sixty four dated dies but some silver dime planches were struck with 1965 dies. This is an unblemished example with light straw gold toning save for a small area of powder blue patent and near three o'clock on the reverse. It was sold for $14,400. Number four in 1965. Washington Quarter struck on a silver planche. Another transitional era coin with the same date graded in Mint State 62 by PCGs. A transitional error struck on a leftover silver planche from 1964. Errors of this type are rare. This piece is satiny with ivory white luster and minimal abrasions for the grade. Slight strike softness is seen on the finer details of Washington's portrait. It was bargained for $16,800. Vertical bar, number three, 1964. Jefferson Nickel from Special Mint Set, graded as MS-68 Full Steps by PC Jess a phenomenal condition rarity worthy of inclusion in the finest Jefferson nickel set. Satiny surfaces are silky smooth and texture fully struck and simply a delight to behold. Exactly how many prototype 1964 SMS Jefferson nickels were produced is not known with certainty as no records were kept regarding this coinage. This rare specimen was sold for $17,625, number 21964. Lincoln sent from Special Mint Set Enigmatic Experimental Mint Issue. According to Heritage Auctions, there is no way to explain the existence of 1964 SMS coins. These coins have a special finish, often described as falling between proof and mint state circulation strikes. They closely resemble the 1965 Special Mint Set coinage in terms of quality. Speculation suggests the 1964 SMS coins were struck as mint trials prior to the introduction of 1965 special mint sets, or they may have served as special presentation sets, but the mint does not report any such mintage. It is thought no more than 50 1964 sets were produced. This MS-65 red scent example displays the appropriate razor-sharp strike and obvious dye polishing to create its special appearance. It was sold for $18,000, Number 11964 Kennedy Half Dollar Elusive Accented Hair Subtype Graded as PR68 Ultra Cameo by NGC. The 1964 Accented Hair Variety is actually a subtype of the initial Kennedy Half Dollar issue of 1964. This issue, with its bold part in President Kennedy's hair, is seldom found with black and white contrast, and it is highly elusive. In PR68 Ultra Cameo, this superb gem is fully brilliant with frosty silver devices and deeply mirrored fields. It was sold for $19,975. Number 
1914 D. Lincoln Cent graded in Mint State 66. Read by PCGS, according to Heritage Auctions, the 1914 D is one of the premier keys to the Lincoln Cent series, boasting one of the lowest mintages in the set with less than 1.2 million coins struck. In fact, this early Denver Mint issue is considerably more challenging in high grade than the more famous 1909 SVDB. Most Mint State survivors show up in MS-63 and MS-64 in the brown and red and brown categories. Fully red coins are much scarcer. This strongly struck premium gem features bold detail on Lincoln's hair and beard. The legends on both sides and the reverse wheat stalks are similarly razor sharp. Satiny luster glows from finely textured copper orange surfaces. It was sold for $72,000. Number June 19, 22. No D. Lincoln sent with strong reverse dye pair too. The obverse is a mushy mess. The Ellen Liberty pulled to the rim and the portrait under detailed the luster of the whole of Quicksilver gloss found only on the most put upon dyes. The reverse, of course, is far sharper and has a distinct swirl to the underlying luster. It displays charming surface color violet infused on both sides with a deep brown base on the obverse but distinctly redder on the reverse, which technically remains brown but is far livelier than that name might suggest. Carbon is minimal and marks are few on this remarkably well-preserved gem. It ended up selling for $82,250, number 51927. Lincoln Cent graded in Mint State 68, read by PCGS. This is another issue that is readily available in fully red gem condition, though the population drops rapidly above the grade of MS-66 RD, while some coins will have less than full strikes. This is not a major issue with a 1927 P Cent, and collectors should settle for nothing less than a sharp impression. M68 specimens are rarely encountered, though. This spectacular penny fetched a sum of $84,000 at auction number 41969S Lincoln Cent, with double dioverse graded in Mint State 64 read by PCGS. The 1969S double dioverse has been called the king of the Lincoln Cent varieties. The variety was first recognized in mid-1970, but the Discovery coins were declared counterfeit and even seized by the U.S. Secret Service. True 1969 SDDO sent displays doubling of all letterings on obverse except the mint mark. The well-preserved original red surfaces of this error penny are lustrous and appealing despite a few small amber carbon spots on both sides. Three attractively tone-proof 1909 VDB sent this 1909 VDB Lincoln Cent certified PR67 plus red and brown PCGs with the added KC gold label is a legendary coin among aficionados of map-proof Lincolns. This piece truly is a joy to behold. Generous daubs of rose pink dominate the upper hair and forehead of Lincoln, and a bit of the reverse around the T and scent seating to light sandy orange colors accented with glints of jade throughout the fields. In the remainder of the devices on each side, the fine matte texture is completely pristine and unperturbed throughout, complementing the foolproof strike and squared off inside rims. There is absolutely no trace of carbon contact or any other distraction. It was sold for $258,500. Number 2. A Wartime Error Penny 1943 Bronze Scent graded as AU50 by PCGS AU. Standing for about uncirculated, meaning it was very briefly circulated and show slightest traces of wear on high points and fading of original luster. The 1943 bronze Lincoln scent is probably the most famous and sought-after error coin of all time. The copper used for coining bronze scents was needed for the manufacture of munitions during World War II, and all Lincoln scents were supposed to be struck on zinc-coated steel planches. As fate would have it, some of the old bronze planches remain stuck in the tote bins used to feed the coin presses at the end of 1942. When coinage began in 1943, this handful of bronze planches became dislodged and fed into the presses, along with millions of the regular issue steel planches, creating this mysterious mint error. This error penny ended up selling for $336,000, number 11944S zinc coated steel scent another famous and super-valuable wartime era coin. Graded in Mint State 66 by PCGs, the 1944 zinc-coated steel scents owe their creation to the dark days of World War II, when America and her allies needed strategic metals, including copper and nickel, for the war effort. The 1943 Lincoln scents were struck out of a catastrophically flawed combination of metals, namely steel coated with a thin layer of zinc. As any numismatist worth his salt knows, 
the zinc-coated steel scent planches were magnetic. Not only did they develop rust and a powdery, mildewed appearance, zinc oxide after a short time in circulation and in the presence of moisture, they also did not function in the one-cent gum vending machines prevalent at the time, which used magnets to defeat steel blanks inserted as currency. The 1944 steel scents were off-metal errors, apparently created via the same mechanism as the 1943 copper scents, when a smattering of leftover blank planches from the previous year remained in mint tote bins or hoppers as the new year turned. Although the 1943 copper scents have seen the lion's share of publicity over the years, the 1944 steel scents are nearly as rare but less well known. This error scent ended up selling for $408,000. There you have it, folks, the fascinating journey through the world of rare Lincoln scents. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on all things numismatic, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Gods will see you in the next episode. Hello again, my friends. Before we start the video, thank you for the interaction. The previous video was titled, Where Can You Sell Your Coins? I received many good messages from you. I hope to help you every time in knowing the value of your own coins. In this video, we will see a valuable coin before the video if you are not a subscriber to the channel. Subscribe to the channel and activate the bell feature to receive all new updates from our channel. Let's get started. Is 1982. New pens from the United Kingdom caught fire, Elizabeth being the second. British Royal Mint coin is in circulated brown condition as you can see from the painted over surfaces that were originally copper red when it was struck. Even though the lettering is well struck, the bottom half of the bust and the here section of the queen both exhibit some softness in the circulation or strike. With another small flame flowing around the collar, one huge kneecat eye is visible on the northern rims. However, this rich coconut brown patina next to the Light Queen's chain is the primary source of diversion. Don't forget to click the subscribe and leave buttons below if you haven't already done so. More than 408 million bronze were struck by British royal means. In 1980, we added two new pen parts. These coins initially featured the word new inserted onto the reverse design to prevent confusion between the old and new coinage. Later, this was taken down. Since 1980, there have been 43 years of coins in use. The new pens introduced by Elizabeth II in 1980 are not regarded as rare or priceless. In the United Kingdom, it was a widespread circulation coin, and it is still seen frequently today. A portrait of Queen Eliza, the second verse, and the designation for new pens on the rivers are all featured in the design. Even though some coin collectors could be interested in acquiring this coin for their collection, it doesn't have a high value and isn't rare. Factors including condition minting, mistakes, and distinctive variants could possibly raise its value a little, but it's doubtful that it would be worth much. NGC price cut estimates that they are worth 20 cents in MIS 6330 in MS60 condition and 50 cents in MS65 condition. However, uncirculated coins occasionally fetched between $1 and $7.08 on eBay. All okay, bye for now. Please click the thumbs up and subscribe icons below if you enjoyed the video. I greatly appreciate it. Now, I personally hand out $2 bills as a tip, or I'll pay with them at the store because they are great conversational pieces. Now, many people know that they are still actively producing these $2 bills as we speak. That's right, and the majority of them are unfortunately not that rare. But the ones we go over in this video are incredibly rare and very valuable, and you won't want to miss what we go over. So stay tuned, and let's hop right into this video south. This $2 bill has a stain on the bottom. It's a bit distracting, and it looks like there's a giant fold going on the right-hand side of the bill. Now, when you flip it over to the back, if you look at the left-hand side there, you can see something a bit odd is happening. That's because this is called a gutter fold error. What happened is during the printing production of this $2 bill, the bill got folded over and printed on. Now, if you find a gutter fold error like this, you might want to get it certified by a company like PMG to increase its value. This person got this $2 bill from a bank and they were able to sell it for $1.84. Now, this example right here is a 1995 $2 bill. The first thing I want to point out is on the front, bottom right-hand side, you'll see an FW followed by a letter and a number. The letter and the number combination is called the front plate number. 
Now, before a front plate number, which is located in two spots on a United States bill, is going to be where the bill's produced. So paper money in the U.S. is only produced at the Fort Worth, Texas facility or the Washington, D.C. facility. If your banknote says FW on it like this one, that means it was produced at Fort Worth. If there is no FW anywhere, that means it was produced at Washington, D.C. The big reason why this one sold for $94 is because look at the serial number. There's only zeros and twos. This is a fancy serial number, and that's why it's for 94 bucks. So you can go to your local bank and pick up a pack of $2 bills. You can say, hey, do you guys have any brand new $2 bills straight from the BEP and see if they have them? If not, they could probably order them for you. This person got a pack of $102 bills. As you can see, there's a face value of 200 bucks, and they sold it for $504. Crazy, right? So this is a genuine large-size United States $2 silver certificate. So back in the day, you could bring this $2 bill to a local bank and get $2 worth of silver in return. We love these $2 bills. We think these large-size bills are so, so cool. We have plenty of them in our collection. However, what makes this one so rare is when you flip it over to the back, the back is actually inverted. It's upside down. That's why this example sold for $1440. $2,000 for this $2 bill. This is another genuine United States $2 bill. This one is a legal tender, as you can see by the red seal and serial numbers on this $2 bill. You could technically spend this at a local store today. However, we highly recommend against doing that. One, you might get the cops called on you because people think something like this is fake. And two, there's way more collector value than just two bucks. As you can see, this one sold for $2,000. All right, now this is a brick of $2 bills, so there's a face value of 2,000 bucks. What this person did is pretty much they're making free money. If I'm being quite clear, they're going to their bank, they're getting a lot of $2 bills that are brand new and then selling them online. This person sold them for $2,500, $60,000 for this genuine $2 bill. This is from the late 1800s. This is what we call a lazy deuce $2 bill because of that large two that is on its side which is why they call it a lazy deuce. All you got to know on this example is that it's highly collectible and people really want to add this banknote to their collection, especially if they're into $2 bills and old paper money in general. This one is from the Denver Co. territory, and that's why it's over $60,000. If you enjoyed this video, then hit that like button and we'll see you in the next one. All right, folks, get ready for a wild ride. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of 1979 Susan B. Anthony dollars. Now, most of these coins won't leave you rolling in dough, but hey, I've got a special treat for you. Hold on to your hats as I reveal some jaw-dropping examples that fetched a pretty penny. Take a gander at this 1979 D1 Susan B. Anthony coin created by none other than NGC and minted at Denver Mint. Now, where your coin comes from can sway its value, but the grade is a game changer. We're talking perfection here, people. A grade of 70 is the ultimate prize. And this baby, it's just two points shy of that flawless grade sitting pretty at 68. Okay, in this video, we'll discuss some 1979 Susan B. Anthony coins that sold for a lot of money. Although the majority of these coins won't be very valuable, I'll show you a few examples that sold for a lot of money in this video. Here is a dollar one. Susan B. Anthony coin from 1979D that was struck by NGC in Mint State 68. The Denver Mint, where this currency was produced, is indicated by the D-Min mark on the left side of the coin. The mintage of a coin will determine its value depending on where it is produced, but a more important consideration. And guess what? This unicorn of a coin sold for a whopping $1,527 that's one shiny piece of history. So whether you're a seasoned collector or new to the game, these coins have stories to tell. Stay tuned because we're about to unravel the mysteries of numismatic wonders. The letter grade is R. The maximum grade we can receive is a 70. This coin's 68 grade puts it just two points short of the ideal grade of 70. Therefore, S. Susan B. Anthony coin for $1,527 up the next week in 1979. This one was given an MS-68 grade by PC Jess. Once more, two points behind, but this time it was a San Francisco mint coin. That S-men mark denotes just that. Also keep in mind that when combined with other elements like the date, the mint mark, and the quality, 
Selling your coin does matter. For a Susan B. Anthony coin, this one went for dollar three thousand dollar eight hundred eighteen, which is a significant sum of money. This one is fairly simple. If if you ever come across a Susan B. Anthony coin that resembles this, you might be able to purchase something. This 1979 S. Susan B. Anthony dollar coin, which sold for dollar seven thousand four hundred seventy-five, was inadvertently minted on a cent plant sheet larger by PCGS, say sixty-four. The coin in question is a 1979 P dollar one. Susan B. Anthony coin. This one currently has the P mint mark. Coins don't typically have a P mint mark. Simply said, there won't be a mark. And by extension, it follows that the coin was intended to be this one with the PCG's grade. I intended to say 67 plus. Although the plus designation might not appear important, it actually raises the worth of all things. Everything together. By clicking the subscribe button, you can allow this coin to sell for $6,462. Let us really have it out with you two. Return with them. I'm grateful for more. In the following video, I'll see you. How can you tell if the 1962 penny you have is rare in the movie? I'll provide you all the information you require to make sure I don't overlook any rare 1962 pennies that may be worth thousands of dollars. Welcome back to the pricing in every money. Start immediately by subscribing and clicking that bell if you're new here and want to learn more about rare coins and paper money so you don't miss anything. Let's begin the video right away. A 1962 one cent Lincoln Head coin that has been graded by PCGS as Mint State 67 Red is presented first. The maximum grade in grading is therefore 70, and this assignment was only three points short of that ideal score. There is no mint mark underneath this one. The date indicates that this coin was struck in Philadelphia because of this. Below the date, you could occasionally detect a S or a D mint mark. The S stands for San Francisco, the D for Denver. But this one was designed to be a Philadelphia coin with a massive mintage of 609,263,000 coins. Therefore, in general, high grade attractive coins from 1962 would be valuable and given that this one penny sold for dollar two hundred sixty-four, it could be worthwhile to have them evaluated. Here is an Amen State sixty-six red graded nineteen sixty-two D one cent Lincoln Head penny. The D mint symbol is now visible there beneath the date. The Denver mint produced one billion seven hundred ninety-three million one hundred forty-eight thousand of those coins. Those money. There are a lot of coins out there, but those that are in good condition still fetch a good price. Keep a watch out for your coins if they appear to be particularly fine, like this coin did as it sold for $632. Here is another 1962 D1 cent Lincoln Head Penny graded by PCGS in State 67 Red, moving up in value. The color that the grading business used to identify this coin is what I mean when I say red there or brown or any other hue. Coin collectors frequently seek out red brown or red brown. Coins because they enjoy collecting a variety of coins. However, in this case, it was given a red rating. Additionally, this coin earned such a good grade, one point more than the previous coin. The price of this coin was $14,140. Yes, 1440 for this penny, that is correct. Here is a 1962 Lincoln one cent coin that PCGS rated as a proof like 69 deep cameo. You can tell that this coin is different from the others since it is proof that it never should have entered circulation. It has a very shiny, sparkling aspect. And because it was rated as a proof and was only one point short of the ideal score of 70, it sold for $1,500. The proof shows a similar copy to this one, which is a 69 deep cameo graded by PCGs. The price of this coin was $2,558. This 1962 no mint mark is shown. Philadelphia PCGS Lincoln then had a penny graded by PGGS as a red mint state 67. The most significant factor in this case, and I know it sounds insignificant, is that PGGS indicated that this is a plus indication for the 67 grade. This means that if you had two coins, one graded mid state 67 and the other 67 plus, there would be a sizable price difference between the two, which is why this one penny went for $4,817. A 1962 one cent Lincoln head coin that was graded by PCGs as a mid-state 67 red is shown here. 
One further thing to consider is that the grade isn't necessarily the most important thing. The overall eye appeal of these coins plays a significant role in why they sell for such high prices. Eye appeal and the general appearance of the coin are two factors that collectors consider. If you have two coins with mint states greater than 67 and one has a superior overall appearance, it's more glossy, has fewer nicks and gashes, it will simply sell for more because it looks prettier. And because of my appeal, this single penny went for $5,875. Here is a 1962 Philadelphia one-cent Lincoln Head coin with no mint mark that was graded by PCGS as Mint State 67 plus red. Right on, right on. This penny sold for $8,812 since it received the plus classification, which is significant for this piece. We're going to show you how to tell if you have a rare 2008 Lincoln penny. First, look for a PCGS graded 2008 P Lincoln cent cent with a specimen 69 red with a satin surface. This is one point away from the highest grade of 70, which is very difficult to obtain. Also, make sure there is no mint mark beneath the year. If you have these two features, then you may have a rare coin worth thousands of dollars. So stay tuned and subscribe today for more tips on collecting rare coins and paper money. What is the best way to tell if you have a rare 2008 Lincoln penny? What's going on in this video? I'll tell you everything you need to know to ensure that I don't miss any unusual 2008 connecting pennies worth thousands of dollars. Welcome back to the days of old money prices. If this is your first visit and you want to learn more about rare coins and paper money, subscribe today and click the bell to ensure you don't miss anything. Let's get started with the video. First up is a PCGS graded 2008 P Lincoln cent cent, a specimen 69 red with a satin surface. So if you're new to grading, the greatest grade we can obtain is 70, and this is only one point away from that 70, which is really difficult to obtain. Next, there is no mint mark beneath the year. If your coin lacks a mint mark, it was produced by the Philadelphia Mint. The number of coins minted for that specific mint as well as the condition of the coin will vary depending on the mint from which your coin came. So if you come across a 2008 cent, make sure you hold it correctly. Don't scratch the coin. Don T, throw it away. Don't scratch it because it will reduce the worth of your coin. As a result, this one was classified as a specimen. This signifies that when this coin was sent into PCGs, denotes that this coin is a specimen coin. Because these grading companies are so specialized and professional at what they do, they can usually signify something like this. Often, it is the extremely minute variances and differences in these coins that indicate whether the coin is a specimen or not. Because it is a specimen, this type of currency is rarely seen in circulation, yet it is still feasible to locate in circulation. In typically, this would be found in a coin collection given to you by a friend or family member. But that doesn't mean it can't be valuable even if it isn't a specimen. However, one single penny went for $150. Here we have a PCG's graded 2008 one cent Lincoln Head penny, a specimen 69 red with a satin surface. As a result, not all of these coins will have a satin surface. Again, a grading business or a specialist will need to inform you what the coin is. However, the mint basically adds another coat. They give the coin a satin sheen which gives it a different appearance than usual, and this alone will raise its worth. This penny is only one point shy of the perfect grade of 70, and it's also the specimen coin, therefore it's sold for $259. Here's a 2008D with D guys written on it. The year is listed below. Denver Mint, one cent Lincoln head penny with a satin finish graded by PCGs, Mint State 68 red. The coin is immediately noticeable for its bright red hue. Because of the red color, it received a RD after the grade on the coin. You can see it on the PCG's label. So this coin is only two points short of a 70. Being from the Denver Mint, it received a good grade from PCGS and sold for $247. So have a look at this coin. So here we have a PCGS Mint State 68 Red 2000 D1 Cent Lincoln and Penny. This is fantastic. A coin that brought a lot of money is an example. Take a look at this coin. As a result, a coin of the same grade can be worth much more money. According to PCGs, this one does not have a satin finish. But look at the coin. It's stunning. So if you have a 2008 penny that looks like this, you could be in possession of a coin worth thousands of dollars because this one penny 
which someone either found in circulation or purchased a coin roll and went through their coins and found this one sold for dollar one thousand nine hundred fifty five. Here we have a PCG's a two thousand eight D one cent link in a penny, like the mid state sixty eight red. It actually depends, as I've indicated before in some of my earlier videos. Also, while selling your coin, the market will determine the value as well as the scarcity and overall condition and grade of the coin. So if you have a 2008 Denver Mint penny like this one, it might be worth a lot of money if it's in good shape and sold at the correct moment. As a result, this single penny sold for $2,990. However, if this coin had graded a 69 instead of a 68, it would have easily brought close to $3,500 or $4,000 only for this one penny because of the beauty, the condition, and the rarity. The coin's grade and general look. Click the subscribe button. It definitely helps with the YouTube algorithm. Keep an eye out for more, and I'll see you in the next video. Have you ever wondered why some coins are worth more than others? Well, let me break it down for you. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of coin valuation. Picture this. A rare coin recently sold for a whopping dollar 8,400. Incredible, right? But here's the thing. It's not just luck. I'm going to reveal the secrets behind maximizing the value of your own precious coins. Now let's start with a coin that sold for $1,118.40. Pay close attention as we unravel the factors that determine a coin's worth. By the end of our journey, you'll be equipped to make the most out of your own coin collection. Get ready to unlock the hidden treasures within your grasp. Let's dive in. Now this is a 1932 D25 Washington quarter by NGC at a mint state 63. So a few things here. First of all, this 1932 quarter was the first year the United States started producing the Washington quarter. That alone has some collector value there because people want that first year of issue coin. Next, this is AD Mint marked coin standing for the Denver Mint where this coin was actually produced. You can see that mint mark on the back bottom center of the coin. Now the next big factor here in the value is going to be its condition. So on a grading scale, 70 is the highest and this coin got the 63 grade. The two biggest grading companies are NGC and PCGs when it comes to grading and authenticating your collectible coins. If you have a 1932 coin like this, you might want to get it graded because this example sold for $1,118.40, 2232 bucks for this 1946 S25 Washington quarter graded by NGC at a mint state 68. Now, the first thing I will notice on a coin like this is that coloration going on in Washington's portrait area. You can see it almost has a rainbow effect happening in the hair and the jaw area. That's okay, and that's a naturally occurring oxidation process that we call toning. Now toning happens based upon where the coin was actually stored and the chemicals in the air reacting with the metals in the coin. Now toning like this can either impact the coin and negatively or positively based upon what the collector is looking for in their collection and if they think the coin looks good or not. This coin only graded two points away from the perfect grade of 70 and it is a S mint mark coin standing for the San Francisco mints. Now San Francisco will typically produce less coins than Denver Philadelphia which could mean that this coin is worth more because of that variant of the coin. Keep in mind a lot of it has to do with supply and demand if there are a lot of s mint mark coins out there that means that this coin would be worth less money however san francisco like i said usually produces less coins and the grade of this coin is so high that's why it's sold for 22 32 bucks we've got some great examples here this is a coin that sold for dollar three thousand two hundred forty this is a 193625 cent washington quarter graded by ngc at a proof 67. So what do we mean when we say proof? Well, there's a clear difference between a mint sake coin and a proof coin, and we will show you that right here. Proof coins will typically have a backdrop or field of the coin that is like a mirror, and it's shiny when a normally issued coin does not have that whatsoever. Proof coins are done one by one by a mint employee, so they're pretty much all hand done, which means the quality of them is really, really nice. This proof coin graded at the 67 grade, and that's why it sold for 3,240 bucks. While look at the rainbow toning on this one south, this 1942 coin was graded by PCGs at a proof 68. Now, once again, we have another proof one which will increase its value, and we have what's called a CAC sticker. 
So if you look at the holder here, you can see there's a small little green bean sticker called the CAC sticker. Now after you get your coin graded, you can send it off to a company called CAC. What they do is they will look at the coin in the holder and see if the coin looks nice for the grade. If they think it looks nice, they will add on that little sticker there. It may seem pretty silly, but that little sticker will increase the value of the coin dramatically. Because this 1942 coin got graded at a proof 68 and has a KAC sticker. It sold for $4,080.5280 for this 195625 cent Washington quarter graded by PCGs at a mint state 68. Now this has some very vibrant and wild warm toning happening on this specific coin. Obviously a collector really enjoyed the look of this coin. Now do keep in mind that when it comes to toning on your coin, toning only really matters when it comes to uncirculated coins. If you have a coin that's in very beat up condition, then toning like this is not really going to matter for the most part. Unfortunately, we started the video on a 1932 and we have another 193,225 cent Washington quarter, except this one got the grade of a 67. That is much higher than the first coin we went over. As you can see, this one also has that toning. I would say overall the toning looks pretty nice here, but that really does come down to the collector if they like that toning or not. Sometimes we will get in a bidding war where two collectors will really go after a specific coin, and they will pay a lot of money bidding each other up until one of them taps out. This coin sold for $6,600. Now this coin right here sold for $8,400. This is a 1976 bicentennial quarter, so we are all familiar with these coins. They are very popular and the majority of them are not going to be worth this much money. However, this specific example is very special and the reason is when they were creating this coin, the die that would strike this specific coin was accidentally doubled. So this is what we call a double die obverse coin. Now obverse means the front of the coin. If anyone ever says reverse, that means the back of the coin. This one has doubling on the front or the obverse of the coin. Now there's going to be certain areas we want to look at. Sometimes doubling can be more obvious than other times. This example is a bit hard to see, but with the right USB microscope and magnification, you'll be able to see exactly the doubling that we're talking about here. So if you have a double die obverse bicentennial quarter like this, you could win for a real treat because dollar eight thousand four hundred is one sold for now if you find this coin what we recommend is that getting the opinion of at least three different people what you can do is you can drive around to different coin shops and see how much your coin is worth get their opinion the reason we say three different people is that way you know you're getting the true value of your coin now, if you don't want to drive or you don't have any coin shops around you, we offer a service down below called the Coin Value Club, where you can send us and our team pictures of coins, and we will tell you exactly how much they're worth and how to sell them. We hope you enjoy the video, and we'll see you in the one. Welcome back to Coins of Rosie Coin Collectors. I'm going to discuss five uncommon and valuable incorrect dime values in this episode, most of which I'm sure you were unaware of. Press the subscribe button situated beneath this video and let's commence. Five, this is undated 90% silver Roosevelt dime with fold over strike, graded in mint state 66, full torch by NGC according to Stax Bowers, a complex error that is at once visually dramatic, very rare, and very desirable. The planche was folded over on itself, the telltale seam where the two halves meet, being clearly visible before and partially through Roosevelt's face. The ends of the fold are also clearly seen from the edge, with a small teardrop void at each end. The planche has split under the stress about midway across the fold, slightly off-center, but far better in this respect than most examples seen. Roosevelt's full head is on the flan, as is the entirety of the reverse's central motif sharply struck. Unfortunately, the metal flow has rendered the date invisible, but it is clearly on a 90% silver planche. Dating it prior to 1965, it was sold for dollar two thousand eight hundred twenty. Number four, this is nineteen seventy three S Roosevelt dime, triple struck with clashed eyes, graded as PR sixty eight Ultra Cameo by NGC according to Heritage Auctions. Heavy clash marks are evident on each side. The planche gradually expanded out of collar for each of the three strikes, resulting in planche splits at eleven o'clock and four o'clock relative to the obverse, with a few other smaller splits elsewhere around the edge. 
The fields remain deeply mirrored and the frosty devices are sharp. It ended up selling for $3,840. Number 3. This is 2002 S. Roosevelt Dime with reverse die cap graded as PR67 Ultra Cameo by NGCA. Fascinating error. The reverse impression is razor sharp within the base of a shallow cap, the planche freeing itself or being removed from the reverse die after only a few additional impressions, likely one or two. The other side of this cap also exhibits a razor sharp strike from the obverse die. Both sides are brilliant with deeply reflective fields supporting frosty design elements. It was sold for $3,360. Number two here is 1968. D. Roosevelt dime struck on a 90% silver planchette circulated aerodyne in AU-55 condition. This piece circulated only briefly before it was saved and recognized for its special nature. Exactly how a 90% silver planchette was struck in 1968 is a mystery, but the weight is consistent with the old silver planches rather than the new clad composition. An examination of the edge shows no reddish line to suggest a copper core unusually well detailed for the issue. A further clue? It was sold for $5,750 number one, and this is famous transitional error from Roosevelt Dime Series 1965. Ten cent piece struck on a silver planchette left over from 1964, graded in Mint State 62 by PCGs. Bright silver with a trace of toning on the lower reverse and lustrous throughout. While seemingly innocuous, this is all the usual appearance of a typical silver Roosevelt dime, but the date of 1965 is when the clad sandwich metal coinage began. There are a few of these known off-metal old planchette strikings, but very few especially in mid-state, as these would easily have slipped into circulation unnoticed as silver coins dominated the coins in circulation for a few years after the clad coins were launched in 1965, similar in error to the famed 1943 copper cents where a handful of leftover planchets were stuck in the hopper, and when coinage began in the new year slipped into production unnoticed. One of the great mint errors of the 1960s and an important and rare coin for the specialist. It fetched a sum of $16,450 at auction. That's all, folks. Your likes and comments are highly appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. We have daily updating numismatic content for you. Gods will see you in the next episode. Today, we dive into the exciting world of valuable coins. There's this one incredible quarter from 1932 that was sold for a staggering $34,800. Can you imagine that? This little coin is a rare gem minted in San Francisco, but how can you tell if your quarter comes from the same mint? Don't you worry, we've got you covered. Get ready to uncover the secrets of the San Francisco mint right here. Stay tuned, because you never know what treasures might be hiding in your pocket. It's time to increase your brand awareness and embark on an electrifying journey through the world of rare coins. So join us and let's strike gold together. Do you have a valuable quarter in this video that is rare? We'll talk about a rare 1932 quarter that fetched an astounding $34,800 for an A1 small quarter coin. So the San Francisco Mint produced this quarter in 1932. How can one tell if their quarter was made in the San Francisco Mint now? We'll demonstrate right now though. You may notice a little mint mark in the bottom center of the coin if you turn it over to the back. This particular piece has a S mint mark, which stands for the San Francisco Mint. Which mint mark is present there now depends on where your currency was made. The Denver Mint's mint mark will be a SAD, while the Philadelphia Mint's mint mark will be a P or no mint mark at all. Therefore, if your coin lacks a mint mark, it was likely made at the Philadelphia Mint. The strange coloration that surrounds the coin's exterior is one of the first things you undoubtedly noticed about it. That is what is meant by toning. Toning naturally occurs as the metals in the coin oxidize in the air. Depending on how much a buyer is actually ready to pay, toning like this might occasionally boost or lower the value of the coin. Consequently, 1932 is the first year they ever began creating the Washington Quarter, which is one of the factors contributing to the coin's high value. The coin will still be worth much more than 25 cents, even if the grade is not as high, at a PCGS mint, say 66. For $34,800, this instance was sold. Where 1974 Lincoln cents can be. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, 
make sure to smash subscribe and bell buttons below this video. Now you may be wondering what makes these coins so special. Well, nothing to be honest. This is just a circulated specimen from Coiner's collection. Brown and slightly tarnished example from Philadelphia Mint Coin displays some circulation drop on the peaks of reliefs, but the fields are mostly free from mentionable contact marks. This pen is worth just little more than its face value. If we would consider copper melt value, the 1974 Lincoln cent was produced in large quantities with over 4 billion coins minted that year. This high mintage number makes them readily available and keeps their value relatively low. In terms of high grades, such as main state's condition, the 1974 Lincoln cents do not command significant premiums. While some collectors may seek out examples in pristine condition for their collection, there is not a high demand for these coins in the emismatic market. Therefore, their value in the high grades remain relatively modest. However, starting from Miss 67 grades, they are starting fetching up pretty good sums. At auctions, they are very hard to find. M67 plus specimens are scarcer and have a guiding price of $850. Super rare grade is M68. PCG's reported just three specimens in that grade was non-finer guiding prices, $6,500. One of the most expensive specimens sold at auction is this Miss 68 Red Gem. The surfaces exhibit copper-orange coloration and sharp strike definition was not mentionable blemishes or contact marks. It ended up selling for $92,181.25 in 2020. Thanks for joining us today and exploring the intriguing world of 1974 Lincoln cents. Many thousands of dollars worth of gold coins. I'm going to discuss some extremely rare Sacagawea dollar coins in this video that sold for a ton of money and that you should keep an eye out for right away. It's crucial to understand that, contrary to popular belief, these Sacagawea coins are not struck with gold. They appear golden because they are actually copper coins with a brass outer coating. The coin you are currently viewing on the screen was sold for $84,000. Guys, yes, it was given an AU58 grade by the Independent Grading Service, NGC. Nearly uncirculated is referred to as AU. Now, the reason I received an AU grade is that there is, the coin has some nicks and gashes. Because of this, the state of your coin has a significant impact on its worth. Make sure you are protecting and not destroying any rare coins you may have. Now, the fact that this coin is referred to be a mule coin explains why it is so uncommon. We all now understand what a mule is. Since a donkey and a horse shouldn't mix, this coin's front features a dollar for Sacagawea, and its reverse features a dollar for the president. I'm not sure exactly how this happened throughout the minting procedure. A mint employee may have carried out this action on purpose. Who knows for sure? In the end, it's difficult to trust some people online. But nevertheless, if you came across a coin like this, you would be in for a treat because the Sacagawea dollar sold for $144,000, $84,000 more than the coin did at auction. Now, everything seems normal when viewed from the rear of the Sacagawea dollar. Here, PC gave this one a mid-state 65 plus rating. Now, the plus grade label will significantly raise the coin's worth there, but this is all dependent on the coin's current higher grading. This coin is a mule, same like the previous one, except its front features a statehood quarter. Consequently, these two shouldn't be combined. Your Sacagawea dollar coins won't often be worth more than a few bucks unless they're in really good graded condition. Also keep in mind that some people will attempt to duplicate this error and sell it for a high price online. They may do this by cutting a coin in half, pasting it, or welding it together before coloring the coin to make it look to be a real fault. Because of this, independent firms like NGC and PCGs are crucial to the hobby. The important thing to remember is to cling on to it securely if you do locate one to avoid being conned and cheated. From our U.S. Coins collection, I have two circulation 1968 Washington quarters, one minted in Dever and the other in Philadelphia. Both of them were in excellent shape overall, with Washington's bust showing medium wear and numerous significant contact marks on both sides particularly where the president's face slants and extends. View of the Philadelphia in reverse radial gouging, the most likely damage caused by a coin roll cramping machine, is demonstrated in an example. Such circulating specimens are valued at less than $1. It is not thought that the 1968 Washington Quarter is a desirable or uncommon coin, 
With approximately 471 million being minted, it was created in huge quantities. But it also means that the six to seven conditions are exceedingly hard to find. Denotes the pair the PCGS price guide, six to seven examples are valued at approximately $1,600. MS-68 specimens are extremely uncommon. Thus far, PCGS has only documented 10 examples in this grade. The guiding price is $2,800. According to PCGs, the most valued specimen was sold in 2013. This is a Washington quarter from 1968. It might remain 68. My attractiveness is universally excellent, and my toning might be either powerful or lost. At Heritage Auctions, this important registry coin sold for $9,400 in the end. Would you like to sell your valuable banknotes, stamps, coins, paper money, and notes online? On our website, thecoinads.com, comma, you may post your advertisements for free. Using our currency app makes it much simpler for mobile users to publish currency adverts. 1969. The Jefferson Nickel and Choice were in good shape while they were being circulated. On the high parts of Jefferson's bust, heavy circulation and poor striking specimens slipped to mild wear are seen. Numerous abrasions can be visible on the coin's reverse as well as the surface of the fields. The porch steps at Monticello are entirely level. All grades of the 1969 D nickel up to and including Miss 66 are extremely common. There was a single MS-67 certified specimen in Mid-State 66 for almost $115. The complete step versions are incredibly uncommon. When Scott Schechter suggested it in a December 2012 coin, Q. Dave Bowers dubbed the full step 1969 Jefferson sent the Golden Fleece. According to a world story, the king of Jefferson nickel collectors will be the coin's owner. When this problem arose, the master hub of the 1940 reverse had been in service for about 30 years, and overall equity had been steadily declining over the past decades. This weariness was visible in the amorphic nature of some more complex desired element. The steps at Monticello are particularly noteworthy because they are a rare specimen and include 65 entire steps. The surfaces of this remarkable 20th century rarity are completely frosted, with a slight proof-like reflectivity visible in the fields, and it has a platinum white complexion with a pearlescent shine on each side. At Stax Powers for $33,000 and $600. That sell for good money at auctions. Smash that subscribe button below this video and let's get started five. This is 1991 D. Jefferson Nickel and Miss 67 condition with full steps. The 1991 D. Jefferson Nickel is not generally considered a rare coin, however, its value can vary depending on its condition and any specific attributes it may have. An MS-67 grade typically indicates that the coin is in mint state 67 condition, which is a relatively high grade, and suggests that the coin is well preserved and has minimal wear. Full Steps FS is a designation used for Jefferson Nichols, indicating that the coin steps on Monticello on the reverse side are well defined. Coins with Full Steps designation are more desirable to collectors. BCGS reports just four Full Step specimens in this lofty grade, with none finer. This superb gem is one of them, and it was sold for $2,025 with buyer's fee 4. Here is 1963 Jefferson Nickel in Mint State 67 with full steps. According to NGC 1963, nickels are superior in overall quality to their Denver Mint cousins, but finding a really desirable specimen will still be challenging. To sustain the record mintages of the early 1960s, it appears that both mints increase the set distance of all dyes to extend their useful life. Thus, most coins of these years did not completely fill the dies, exposing unstruck areas of rough planché on the high points of the design. This elusive gem ended up selling for $5,907.38 with buyer's fee 3. Here is 1983 D. Jefferson Nickel in Mint State 67 with full steps. U.S. Mint produced over 536 million 1983 nickels in Denver branch. Finding those in mint condition is not a problem at all given huge mintage, but full steps examples are scarce in MS-66 and higher. Miss 67 FS examples are almost unheard of. PCG's reports just two nickel in that condition, including this masterpiece. It fetched a sum of $7,593.75 with buyer's fee. Number 21949 Jefferson Nickel with RE punched mint mark D. S. Graded in mint state 67 with full steps by PCGSA. Beautiful, superb gem. 
Iridescent champagne apricot toning blends with billowy mint luster, according to Stax Bauer's impressively full and striking detail. Both sides are also expertly preserved and expectably smooth for the assigned grade. It was sold for $18,000. Number one, this is 1939 D. Jefferson Nickel and Miss 68 condition with full steps, the scarcer variety from the second year of Jefferson Nickel production. Faint gold and peach tones dominate the patna, with tinges of powder blue accenting the rims. The luster is uniform and satiny across each side, complementing the overall untouched surfaces. Writing in his Encyclopedia 1988, Walter Breen postulated that this reverse type comprises possibly 40% of survivors. It currently represents 45% of the 1939 D nickel population certified by PCGS, which confirms Breen's suspicion with surprising accuracy. This variety is remarkably challenging in grades above Miss 66, and exponentially more so when the full step detail is considered. This one was sold for $26,400. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to hit thumbs up before you watch another video. Stay well in God's will. See you in the next episode. Top 5 Best Online Coin Sellers Sell silver, gold, and ancient coins on the internet for You've spent a significant amount of time and effort amassing your collection of rare silver and gold coins or bullion. The last thing you want to do is go through all of this. Say you have some coins and are looking for the finest spot to sell them online. A Krugerrand, an American Silver Eagle. Or perhaps you recently acquired a coin collection from your mother, father, or grandparents and are unsure where to sell or what to do with it. Perhaps you're thinking where to sell silver near me. Nothing beats home, right? You don't even have to get up from your chair. Simply sell coins online to get there. Let us make things simple for yourself. Hello, my name is Rosalia, and this is my YouTube account. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so and activate the bell feature to receive new videos for the channel we've gone through. I produced a good list of five locations to buy and sell coins online for you to use. While we have a preference, we want to offer you with all of the data. After you've decided on a coin selling website, read our article on how to get your coins to sell. Do you want to buy coins? I'm not sure what to do. Search for. We have an article. When it comes to rare coins, you should hunt for the best venues to sell coins online. One dot coins for dash sale.com. Only 5% left to sell. There is no listing cost. Two dot heritage auctions charges a 10% commission. Consignment scheme three dot eBay charges a 12.35% plus zero three zero dollar fee in addition to listing fees. A large number of people four dot appmex well known, but will not pay until you have mailed your coins to them. A five pointed star modern coin mart will not pay you until you have sent them your coins. Where can I sell coins on the internet? eBay has 182 million users globally. If you're planning to sell coins, this is an excellent way to reach a large number of people. However, are all of those people purchasing coins? You want to develop a clientele of coin collectors and keep them coming back to buy your coins again and again. They claim to be the most popular auction site on the internet. It must be the best selling location. My coins, correct? You can sell anything from Legos and strange knockoffs of products you already thought were knockoffs to legendary cards. But that could be the source of the problem. There is far too much stuff. It's not merely for selling coins. It is not dedicated to selling or even displaying your mint condition. American Silver Eagle. Filtering and sifting through categories to find any coins is not ideal. It takes time and may hinder customers from finding your offering. While getting people to view your things is crucial, there is another issue to consider when selling anything online. AppMax equal sign 2. AppMax could be your solution if you want a hands-off approach and simply want someone else to sell your coins online with a comparable business model. When it comes to pawn shops, they advertise competitive pricing that is locked in. This means that they will negotiate a price with you before they see the coins, and that price will not change, and you will not be required to display any things in an internet shop. However, this has some limitations. You are not compensated until they receive your coins. That means you're shipping a product for which you haven't even been paid. You're taking a chance by sending someone your entire collection, which may be worth millions of dollars, in the hopes that they'll offer you a fair price for it. I'd be cautious, selling your coins to a shopkeeper who makes money by reselling your stuff. They claim speedy processing and will send your payment within one to two business days of receiving your order.
I'm not sure if sending someone a goods before being paid for it qualifies as speedy processing. Finally, they will not purchase anything under $1,000. That is, if you have a couple of silver coins or a small gold coin, Mart will not accept three current coins, this one as well. Its business concept is comparable to that of a pawn store. Send in your coins, and they'll pay you within a few business days after receiving them. They will then resale your coins for a higher price than they paid you. But there's an even bigger problem. You send them all of your coins before you get paid. Can you think of a company that would take such a risk? Most likely not. There is no minimum product value. However, if your coins are worth less than $3,000, you have only one alternative. To collect your payment via check, which implies that you will have to wait longer while At negotiates a price with you before they see the coins. But you aren't paid until they receive them. MCM will not negotiate a price until they get your coins. That implies you'll still have to send them your coins before you know how much they'll pay for them. You're relying on them to price your coins fairly and precisely for you. Remember, they must resell your product in order to earn from it. The less they charge you, the more money they make. Heritage Auctions is a collectibles auctioneer that has fewer users than eBay. They have, however, been in business since 1976 and are a speciality auction company. So I'd say they've got plenty of time to pick up a few tips. She also provides two choices for selling your coins, consignment, and outright sale. The process of selling outright is straightforward. Send us your information, send them photos of your coins, and they'll get back to you. You can also choose to consign your coins for a price. You'll send them your coins and they'll send you back take images and have them auctioned off for you. This is another one I would carefully consider before proceeding. You're entrusting your expensive coin collection to someone else before being paid for it. If your coin sells, they will take a 10% commission. Your settlement check will be mailed to you 45 days after your auction ends. That is a long time to wait to be paid five coins for dash sale.com. You might not have. I haven't heard of this one yet, but I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they suddenly become a household name among coin collectors rather than a coin vendor or pawn shop. They serve as a marketplace where you can sell your coins. They are undoubtedly a newbie to the scene, but they appear to be expanding swiftly. According to our findings, they already have over 10,000 registered users that may not appear to be much, but consider that I haven't heard about it yet. But I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they suddenly become a household name among coin collectors rather than a coin vendor or pawn shop. They are a marketplace where you can sell your coins. They're obviously a newcomer to the scene, but they appear to be growing quickly. According on our findings, they have already registered over 10,000 users that may not seem like much, but consider the... Hey there, folks. Rosalia from Coins of Rosie here, and I'm stoked to have you join me for another episode showcasing the most epic coins in America. Today, we'll be diving into the top 10 Lincoln cents from the Bicentennial and Shield Reverse series. These modern pennies are actually quite attainable, making them a super cool find in your pocket change. Unlike their elusive counterparts, the pennies on this list have a good chance of crossing paths with you, even up here in Canada. While most aren't worth a fortune in average condition, if you strike gold and find one in pristine condition, the value can soar into the thousands. So without further ado, let's jump into the countdown of these unique and valuable modern American pennies. But before we start, I'd really appreciate it if you could show some love by smashing that thumbs up, subscribing if you're new, and hitting that bell notification to stay updated with my latest releases. All right, folks, let's get this show on the road. So as I start this list off, I'm going to work my way from 10 being the least valuable all the way up to one being the most rare and valuable penny on this list. As I mentioned previously, none of these pennies are worth a lot of money in a low-grade condition. Now, in terms of value, the 2016 D Mint mark, meaning it was struck at the Denver Mint, is not worth a whole lot on the low end. It's only worth about 16 cents, but that is actually quite a premium if you consider the actual face value of the coin is only one cent, but the 2016 D Shield cent can be worth all the way up to $650. If it reaches the high miss mark and gets that red attribution, nine is going to be the 2015 Lincoln Shield cent, and this is from the Philadelphia Mint, meaning it will not actually have a mint mark on it. Now, to get the absolute premium out of this coin, you need to get the red color attribution. And on the low end, it is not worth a whole lot, 
around 16 cents. In fact, just about every single penny on this list is worth 16 cents on the low end because these are the most rare and desirable of the modern penny. So even though 16 cents doesn't seem like a lot, if this was a dollar or a 50 cents coin, that would actually be a pretty nice premium if you were able to get $16 for a $1 coin. So even though it is not a huge price tag on this, it is still not a bad premium on the low end, but it can actually be worth all the way up to $1.780 if you can get that high miss grade as well as the red color attribution eight is going to be the 2009 American Lincoln cent. And this is with the presidency design now. 2009 American pennies are some of the most rare and desirable of the modern American pennies. They have fairly limited mintages and you don't come across them too often. In Canada, I have actually found a few 2009 pennies from the United States, but none of them in a mid state. That is for sure. But for this one, you are looking for the 2009 presidency with no mint mark indicating it was struck at the Philadelphia Mint. To get the absolute most amount of money, you want to get that red color attribution. On the low end, it's only worth about 16 cents if it's in a low grade, beat up and then put through the meat grinder. But the 2009 presidency can be worth all the way up to $910 if you can get a high miss grade. And also that red color attribution seven on this list is going to be the 2017 D Shield Lincoln cent, and it has AD mint mark indicating it was struck at the Denver mint. It's worth 16 cents on the low end and it can be worth all the way up to $1,020 if you can get a high miss grade and also the red color attribution. And that is for the 2017 Denver mint mark Lincoln Shield. Cent number six is going to be the 2010 Lincoln Shield cent, and this is with no mint mark indicating that it was struck at the Philadelphia Mint. Now it is worth 16 cents on the low end, meaning it has a low grade. It has been beat up and put through the meat grinder. If you guys are wondering where I'm getting the values of these coins, I got the values for this list off of graysheep.com. They're one of the best and most informative United States coin guides on the internet that I can find. There is no equivalent to coins in Canada or coins in Australia or UK for the United States coins. Unfortunately, those are some of the best coin grading websites that you can find out there, but Graysheet is pretty decent and they have some pretty accurate prices now on the high end. The 2010 Shield Cent is actually worth exactly the same as the 2017 D Shield Cent. It is worth $1,020 if it can get a high grade and also the red color attribution. Now, another quick note, when I'm saying high grade for these American pennies, I mean MS67 or MS68. A lot of the times when it comes to grading, American coins can actually score out of 70 on the Sheldon scale. It's not too often that you see Canadian coins go above 67, but quite often you will see American coins dip into the 68 and 69 mark a lot of the time, and sometimes they'll even get that 70 grade and they can be worth a whole heck of a lot of moolah. If they do, 5 is going to be the 2016 Lincoln Shield cent, and this is with no mint mark indicating it was struck at the Philadelphia Mint. It is worth 16 cents on the low end, just like every other penny on this list, and it can be worth all the way up to $1,500 for a high-grade example. And also, if it gets the red color attribution, and that is for the 2016 Philadelphia Shield cent. Now, the last four pennies that we are going to cover on this list should come as no surprise to any experienced United States coin collector. They are all from the year 2009. 2009 are some of the most desirable and rare of the modern American pennies, and they can be super hard to find in a high-grade state, and also you just don't come across them too often, even if you are from the United States. Finding one of these in a high-mint state can prove difficult, and if you are from Canada, you will probably never find any of these coins in a high-mint state, and if you do, you are one lucky dog. But next up on this list is four, which is going to be the 2009 Professional Life Lincoln Cent, and this is with no mint mark indicating that it was struck at the Philadelphia Mint. Now, there are four different designs for the 2009 and Lincoln cents. There is the early childhood, the formative years, the professional life, and the presidency designs, all of which have relatively low mintage figures and are quite desirable for collectors. But the 2009 professional life, no mint mark can be worth, surprise, surprise, 16 cents on the low end, and it can be worth all the way up to $1,560 if you find one in a high-grade condition. And it also gets the red color attribution 3 on this list is going to be the 2009 D Mint Mark, indicating it was struck at the Denver Mint Formative Years Design Lincoln Cent. 
Now it is worth 16 cents on the low end, but this bad boy can be worth all the way up to $1,880 if it is in a high grade. And it also gets the red color attribution, and that is for the 2009 Denver Mint Mark formative years. Lincoln Penny 2 is the 2009 formative years Philadelphia, mint Lincoln Penny meaning it has no mint mark. It is worth 16 cents on the low end, and it can be worth all the way up to $1,880 for a high-grade example. And also if it gets the red color attribution, and that is for the 2009 formative years Philadelphia Mint, which means that it has no mint mark on it. Well, can you believe it, folks? We have made it to one on this list already. I really hope you guys enjoy these videos and find them helpful. If you do, I would really appreciate if you would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can follow along with my new videos as they are being released. In the past, I have made plenty of videos breaking down the rare and viable coins from Canada, the United States, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and several other countries, and I'm going to be making plenty more in the future, so make sure to stay tuned for all of those. But what do you say we get into one on this list, which is going to be the most rare and valuable of the modern American bicentennial shield? Reverse Lincoln cent, and that is the 2009D presidency cent. Now this 2009D will have AD mint mark indicating it was struck at the Denver mint. It is worth 16 cents on the low end. So none of these pennies exceed a 16 cent value, nor do they dip below a 16 cent value. They are all worth exactly the same according to graysheet.com.now. Their values may fluctuate depending on if you can find someone that really needs to fill a hole in their collection. But most of the time, you are not even going to be able to get 16 cents for these pennies if they are beat up in a low-grade condition. But it is definitely a decent theoretical value to go off of in terms of the high-end value. The 2009D presidency design can be worth around $3,130 for a high-grade state. Also, if it gets the red color attribution, and that is for the 2009D mint mark indicating it was struck at the Denver mint presidency design Lincoln sent. I also want to quickly mention that there are a few errors and varieties for the modern American Bicentennial and Shield Reverse Lincoln Cents that can be worth some really good money, and I'm going to make sure to cover those in a future video. But these are just the basic circulation and business strikes for the Bicentennial and Shield Reverse American. Lincoln Cents that you have a decent chance of actually finding in your pocket change. You don't need to be an expert to identify these, you simply just need to have eyes and look at the coins and you can make some decent money. But I think that is pretty much going to do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody peace out and have a good one. Commemorative quarters, what is the value of yours? We'll be dissecting bicentennial quarters in this video and explaining why they're currently fetching such high prices on the internet. You won't want to miss a single detail we cover in this video, so pay attention now. Take a close look at this coin. All of that for $19,200. We'll demonstrate to you why it's all for so much money and how should you find a coin to maximize its value. Let's get started with this video sup right away. We have a bicentennial quarter from 1976. That was excellent. Purchase PCGs in Mint State 67. This coin right here is extremely uncommon because it was minting in AD. Mark on the coin's lower right corner. Considering that the Denver Mint where this coin was made is represented by D Mint Rock. Remember that this particular coin is something that you can find in your pocket change. Given that this one was graded so highly that it sold for $104, it's possible that the condition has changed, which is a significant factor. Now let's examine this coin. The first thing you'll notice on this exact coin is the fact that it has some very fiery red going on around the rim edge area of the coin. That is a naturally current oxidation process called toning. Now, toning can either increase or decrease the value of your coin based on how the coin looks to the collector, right? The eye appeal. If the eye appeal is good, if it looks good, then it will increase the value. There are tons of coins that have bad eye appeal that decreases the value because of the toning. This specific example was graded by NGC at a mint, say 67 star S. It is not every day that you see the star designation given by a grading company. That's because they thought this example was phenomenal for the grade and because of all this information. That is why it's up for $372, 8400 for this 1976 bicentennial quarter. This one was graded by PCGS at a mint state 66. 
Now, the big factor here is the fact that this is a DDO or double die obverse coin. Obverse means the front of the coin, reverse means the back of the coin. Now, it may be a little bit hard to see, but doubling is happening here on the front of the coin. Sometimes it's more obvious than others. This one is a bit more subtle. You're going to need some sort of magnification to see what's going on here. I can see a bit going on at the top, near Liberty there. Some other areas are a bit harder to see. However, if you have a 1976 bicentennial quarter that is a double die offers like this one, you're in for a real treat, guys, because this example sold on heritage auctions for $8,400. Here we have it, $19,200 for this 1976 bicentennial quarter. Now I want to show you the back of this coin. On the back right-hand side, you're going to see some weird things happening here. I mean, this coin got graded at the 69 grade, which is quite amazing to think about if there's this damage happening here. So what I think this is, is there is a bit of issues happening with the planche mixture, which caused this to happen. Now, if there's a little piece of different metal in the coin, it can oxidize and change the coloration around the coin. Sometimes people will touch up some areas with some chemicals to make it go away, and then when it's in the holder, it will actually oxidize and change colors over time. Long story short, even with this coloration issue going on in the back, right, because this coin graded so highly, and it's a silver coin, it sold for $19,200. Now, if you want to sell your coin for the most amount of money, this is what we recommend step by step. First of all, do not bring it to a pawn shop because there is a good likelihood that that pawn shop owner does not know anything about coins, and if they do, maybe they're trying to rip you off. So what you want to do is get the opinion of at least three different coin shops. That way you know you're maximizing the value of your coin. If you don't want to go through the trouble of going shop by shop, driving around trying to find a shop that's not trying to rip you off, what you can do is join the Coin Value Club down below and send us a picture of your coin. We'll let you know how much it's worth and how to maximize the value when you go ahead and sell it online or in person. Let's hop into this last coin. And now this is a Mint Air. So this bicentennial quarter was accidentally overstruck on a 1967 dime. This is what we call double denomination air coin. This one graded by NGC at a proof 67. This coin sold for a staggering $15,000. Now, if you have a coin like any of the ones in this video, make sure you hold on to them and keep them safe. And we will see you in the next one.